Okay, so um, hopefully you've had a little think about these questions. Um, uh, so the first one is solids and liquids cannot be compressed. All right, so if you look back at the picture for a solid and for a liquid, you can see that there's no spaces between the particles, and that is why they cannot be compressed. Okay, so um, there are no spaces between particles, obviously. Okay, and then obviously gases you can compress because you see if I start to make this smaller, there's, there's additional space for the particles to move into. Okay, solids have a fixed shape and cannot flow. Like I said in the last video, you see the, the shape of this solid. All right, it doesn't take the shape of the container. All right, and, and it won't flow. And that means that it won't fill a container like a liquid fills a container. And the reason for that is that the, the, um, the particles in a solid, particles in a solid are in a fixed position. Okay, uh, in other words, they are not free to move. And that is why a solid will not flow. So an apple, if you put it in a bowl, it just stays like an apple because all the particles in the apple stay where they are. Obviously, they're still vibrating, but they don't move around. And finally, gases will expand to fill the container into which they are placed. All right, and that's because these gas particles are free to move anywhere they want. The, these liquid particles, they're not. Okay, so they have to sort of move around each other. All right, they can't sort of they can't fly out into the open space. Okay, um, so the the particles are free to move. Particles in a gas are free to move. Okay, all right. So um, moving on. We can continue on the next page. Uh, like all scientific models, there are some problems with the particle models. This is how models work. A model helps us understand what the situation is, but it's not an, an exact representation of, of the situation. So this isn't really what solids, liquids, and gases look like. It's close. Okay, so the, this, you know, it's a good approximation. It's a good model for what the, the solids, liquids, and gases look like, but don't, it's not exact. Okay, um, and we're going to learn about uh, two, we're going to mention two um, problems with this model. So firstly, in the particle model, there are no forces between the particles. So earlier, I talked about the particles being like snooker balls. Now, snooker balls, they don't attract towards each other, they don't repel each other. Um, but as in, in real life, in a solid, a liquid, and gas, the particles do do that. So... Um, so the fact that there are no forces, this is not true. There are usually forces of attraction or repulsion between particles, and we'll learn about those later. Right? So we're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. You should be aware of it. Secondly, we haven't thought very carefully about the size of the particles. In a helium balloon, the average distance between gas particles is about 55 times their size. It's difficult to show this on our diagram. So if you look at this gas particle model here, right, really the gas particles aren't this close together. Okay, so the distance between this particle and this particle is about three times the size of the gas particle. All right, so if I wanted to make an accurate representation, all right, so let's say if I imagine uh, on this, on your screen now, you'd probably be able to fit, you know, maybe two gas particles. All right, and that would probably be it. That's how far apart they are. But, you know, I can't sort of draw a box around that and... Uh, and use that as my model because it's it's not very helpful, right? So what we do is we use this, but we know that really there's not that many gas particles and the gas particles are actually further apart. All right, so moving up to section two, um, chemical and physical change. So this is something that you've learned before, uh, but I'll go through it again. Um, there are two types of change that we'll be thinking about in chemistry, and chemistry really is... Uh, it's all about change, all right? So, you know, biology would be all about living things and, and physics is all about uh, the physical objects, forces, uh, that kind of thing. Chemistry really is, it's all about change, all right? And that's where we have chemical reactions. The first type of change is where the arrangement and movement of the particles changes, but the particles themselves do not change. So what that means is we go from... 
one situation, okay, so like this, all right, so this is a, a solid, and a physical change is where we don't change the particles, all right, so, you know, maybe I could, these are all blue particles, all right, now they're going to still be blue particles over here, but now their arrangement has changed. Okay, so now they're in a liquid. So you can see the actual particles themselves haven't changed. They're still these blue particles, but um, the the arrangement of the particles has changed. Okay, so um, any change of state is a is a physical change. But this is the really important part here. So it's important to remember that in a physical change, no new substance is formed. I don't make anything new. I just I take what I've already got and change uh, the way the particles are arranged. So you can think about it uh, if you obviously have a um, pan of water. Um, all right, and we put it on. So in, in here, I'm not going to draw all the particles out. Let's just imagine that you know I've got these are my liquid particles. Okay, and if I start to heat it up, okay, then what will happen is these particles will then move out and they will become gas particles. All right, so in here, what I've got is water, and up here, I've got steam. All right, so when you're boiling a pan of water, or if the kettle boils and you see steam coming out the top of it, it's still, it's still the same thing. You haven't made anything new. All you've done is you've changed it from a liquid to a gas. And you do the same when you put water in the freezer. Okay, so you take water, H2O, uh, and it's a liquid out of the tap. You put it into the freezer, and it becomes a solid. But it's still H2O. It's still the same thing. You've just changed the arrangement of the particles. Okay, so that's a physical change. Now, the second type of change is where a new substance is formed. So, so you know, physical is no new substance. Chemical is new substance. Okay, and this involves changing the particles. All right, so um, let's imagine, for example, if we have um, methane. So methane is CH4, and I'm going to react that with oxygen, O2, and that's going to make CO2 plus H2O. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so um, that needs to be balanced, so we can balance that now quickly. So you should have taken the you've got four hydrogens here, so you'll need a two here. And then you've got two oxygens here, two oxygens here. So that's four oxygens over here, and you need, you've only got two here, so you need to put a two here. Okay, so what we can see is this is a chemical change, because I start with methane and oxygen, but I end up with carbon dioxide and water. So I've made these new things. So at the start, I didn't have any carbon dioxide, I didn't have any water, but the chemical change has produced those. All right, so in a, uh, in a chemical change, you need to realize that what we're doing is we're forming a new substance, okay? Now down here, I've also said that in a chemical change, atoms are rearranged. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by atoms are rearranged? Well, we can imagine uh, if we have, for example, um, methane. Okay, so this is methane. All right. Um, this is my particle of methane. Okay. And I've got my carbon atom in the middle. And then you can see that I've got one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. So that's my, that's my CH4. That's my methane. Okay. Um, and then I've got two oxygen molecules. Okay. Now an oxygen has got two oxygen atoms in it. Yeah, O2, and I've got two of those. Okay, now, what's going to happen is, so I start with these, yeah, CH4, 2O2, all right, and the particles are going to be rearranged to make a new, to make new substances. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use what I've got here to make new substances. So during the chemical reaction, and we'll learn all about chemical reactions next year, but what happens is these, um, these bonds, they break. Okay, so the bonds between the oxygen atoms break and the bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens break. 
like this. So I've still got all the stuff that I had before. I've still got my carbon, my four hydrogens, and my four oxygen atoms, but I've just broken all the bonds. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange how they how they were uh, put together. So I'm going to, instead of doing it like it was before, I'm now going to take my oxygen. And instead of it being in an oxygen molecule, it's now going to be in a water molecule. So you can see I've now made something new. All right, now I can make two of those, um, like this. Okay, so now I've got two of those. And what have I got left over? Well, I've got my carbon, which I can bond to my oxygen, like this. Okay, so what I've got then, I've used the exact same things, but now I've got uh, CO2 and two. H2O. So I've got my carbon dioxide and my water. And so I've rearranged the atoms and I've made something new. Okay. Um, so that's a chemical change. Right. So what you need to do now is uh, there is um, 10 questions here. All right. You know, start off with very easy ones. What is a physical change? What is a chemical change? Nice and straightforward. All right. Um, and then down here, some more, uh, you know, some more difficult questions for you to, to get your teeth into. All right. Um, but I think, oh, actually, no, sorry, I forgot. Number 10. All right. So some of these, you have to really think about some of these. Okay. Um, especially things like, I think, uh, you know, so I want you to tell me, are these physical changes or chemical changes? So ice cream melting on a hot day, I think that's pretty easy. Steam condensing is easy. Wood burning, that's quite easy. Sugar dissolving in a cup of tea. I think most of you are going to get that wrong. Uh, steam coming off a boiling pot of water, that's easy. Baking a cake. Mm, some of you will get that one wrong. Not as many as you will get sugar dissolving in a cup of tea. And frying an egg. That's also quite a difficult one. All right, you have to really think about it. But if you can, uh, if you can have a good go at those, then you, you, you're doing really well. All right, so... Um, obviously, once you've done that, uh, take a picture, upload it onto Firefly for me to have a look at, and I'll see you next week.